Thank you for the lovely applause. Um, humans, we chase happiness and we chase comfort. So why would we even want to invite discomfort into our life? In my day-to-day -day work, I'm constantly managing people's discomfort in the areas that it shows up, be that in sport or clinical settings. One thing I do know, though, is this. We don't have to be governed by 300 million years of evolution. We do not have to be hardwired. Okay. So I want you to think about your stories. Think about where you get uncomfortable. Think about where you feel sick. Think about where you have anxiety. How do your behaviours change? And do you regret it? I'm here today to help you become more comfortable with your discomfort. Life is the place to experience stress and anxiety. It's going to show up. And although we know this intellectually, we don't want to experience it emotionally. Now, a lot of us think we're very skilled at avoiding discomfort, stopping thoughts. And I just want to do a little experiment with you right now, please. Who here has had their daily cup of coffee? Most excellent. So, for the next five seconds, whatever you do, I want you not to think about that cup of coffee. <laughs> Try your hardest. Seriously. How's it working out for you? <laughs> right. So, your mind actually gives you the, the illusion of control. You need to think about your cup of coffee to know that you're not thinking about your cup of coffee. And when it comes to negative thoughts and negative feelings, the more we don't want to experience those negative thoughts and feelings, the more our mind pays attention to them. This is the reality of life. Who here remembers riding a bike for the first time without training wheels? More hands, great. It's an interesting experience. I was there with my older brother, and my relationship with my older brother was, at best, competitive, and at worst, a little sadistic. Um, the big day came along, I took up the training wheels, I was anxious, I was excited, it was a big deal, and I said to my brother, can you please guide me along the driveway? And he's like, absolutely, Dane, yeah. So I sat down on the bike, took a breath, I pushed forward, went about 10 feet, felt like 100 metres, really proud of myself, turned around for a rapturous applause, and there he was. He hadn't moved, he was just standing there laughing at me. And my little brain panicked. My attention left what I was doing, task, and it went internal. It started to pick up on how I felt. And I promptly fell over, grazed my knees, grazed my face. A bit of pain. The next day though, just like little kids, I got back on the bike. I was able to experience anxiety and still commit to action. And as we move into adulthood, we tend to shift away from that. We tend to try and protect ourselves. We tend to not want to get out of our comfort zone. We become rigid and inflexible. So we need to shift this paradigm. We need to flip it on its head. We need to move from feeling good to perform to performing no matter how we feel. It's counterintuitive. A client of mine is a professional poker player. Uh, has this attitude of who dares wins. But it wasn't always this way. He reflected on his games that at times his emotions weren't always the best guide for his decisions, particularly under stress and pressure. And he said he had this moment of clarity one day, whereby he noticed that poker was like life. It's a long game. And here he was consumed, playing hand by hand. And he was able to get some distance from that. He was able to start to play, irrespective of how he felt, making the right decisions. And what this gave him was freedom. This gave him freedom to perform. 
When you become comfortable with your own discomfort, it gives you freedom. We live in a modern world, right? But we're still governed by 300 million years of evolution. And I've got a little model here that will help you understand why Dr. Dan Siegel. Some of you may be familiar. What I'd like you all to do is raise your hand with me, please. Ah, oh, a salute. <laughs> right. Your hand is your brain. Okay? Now, the brain fits roughly here, and the eyes are here. When you open your palm of the hand, this is, in essence, the reptilian part of the brain. It's the brain stem. It controls all basic functions. Sex, hunger, sleep. The mind's all about fixing problems. So think about it when you're hungry. Where does your attention go? You typically stop what you're doing, and you go and eat a sandwich. Problem solved. Fantastic. If your arm's getting uncomfortable, that's OK. <laughs> In comes your thumb. This is your limbic system. It's roughly 200 million years old. It's the mammalian part of the brain. And for any of you with cats or dogs, the reason you can feel a bit of love when you get home and you see them is because in here is empathy and compassion. Really useful for getting out of your comfort zone. These two guys control your behaviours under stress. All right, you're all doing very well. Over the top, this is our prefrontal cortex, our human brain. It's at least 100 million years old. The reason you can't convince yourself that you feel good when you don't feel good is because it's at least 200 million years younger than the oldest part of your brain. So it controls emotional regulation and all your higher order decision making. So this is your brain when you're feeling confident, when you're feeling comfortable, you're on task. And this is what happens when your brain detects a threat. You flip your lid, do it with me. You freak out. So this is metaphorical, right? You don't literally feel bleed. <laughs> so what's really going on here is your brain is about processing energy and information. Blood leaves the prefrontal cortex, flows into the limbic system to prepare you for action. And the work I do is about helping athletes and other individuals start to transfer the blood flow back up to the prefrontal cortex, no matter what they're experiencing. Bring your hands down, thank you. So when you get familiar with your reptilian brain and your mammalian brain, it starts to give you freedom. And you can make my job redundant. You can become your own personal, non-invasive neurosurgeon. Athletes on international stages are haunted by perfection. All these are training, sacrifice, one chance to get it right. And if you want to know what it's like behind the scenes, it's exciting, yeah. It's anxiety provoking, absolutely. But this might surprise you. But it's smelly. It absolutely stinks. You might be wondering what's going on. Well, just like a little bird that you walk up to in the street and it poos and it flies away, trying to protect itself from the predator, making itself as smelly and messy as possible, this is exactly what goes on with athletes. Their brain tries to protect them from the predator of failure, the stress of anxiety. And it brings on the physical symptoms. Vomit and diarrhea. And some of you may know that experience, and some TED presenters today may know that experience as well. <laughs> so the only way to get through this is exposure to the emotion. When athletes become willing to experience discomfort, they can get on with task, no matter what they're feeling. Uncomfortable thoughts and feelings do not have to define your behaviours. So let's move on 
from the mythology that we need to feel good before we perform. If a little kid on a bike can do it, and you were that little kid on a bike, you can do it again. So next time you come up against a challenge and your lid's flipping, so to speak, it's a behavioural experiment. It's an opportunity for growth. So when this challenge comes along, I've got a couple of tips for you. Notice where your attention is at. Are you on task? Or are you trying to fix how you feel? Secondly, normalise the experience. It's your brain trying to protect you. Finally, commit to action. You'll either learn that you can do it or that you can cope. And coping isn't about feeling good. So I encourage you all, when you leave here, for the rest of your lives, go out and get as uncomfortable as possible. When you do, it will give you the freedom to perform no matter how you feel. Thank you.